Grant, so who thinks this is possible? Who thinks this is even possible? Who's thinking, oops, sorry, who thinks this is not possible? <laughs> not possible at all. Who's thinking, well, if it's not, po if this, if it's not possible, um, I'm just going to walk off stage and say, sorry, it's done. No. Okay, um, you're all correct. Um, let's chat about why, why. Um, this is not about finding open or unsecured networks. It's not about breaking um, web encryption or anything else like that. It's not about breaking WEA um, or WEAP corporate networks or radio servers or anything else like this. This is about breaking into your standard WPA2 access point you'll find at home on a router like something like this you might have gotten from your ISP. And I'm quite specifically talking about that key that you put into your router when you set up your wireless network. So we have to consider how is it that when your computer connects to your access point after you've put these codes in, that um, they know what the code is. I mean, you know, they can't just send it over and show. Anyone else could read and, and, and hear what that is. Um, so it's a bit of a complicated process, but they go through something called a four-way handshake. And I won't spend too much time on this, but there are four interactions that happens through something called management frames. And yet they actually end up with two keys at the end of the day. But the important thing we want to take away from this is that there is a password-based key-derived function that's using a hash with that passphrase you've entered and the SSID, which, the, which is the name of your wireless network. So let's chat about Kali Linux, which is the tool we're going to use um, to use or well, to do this. Um, and if anyone's got um, Kali Linux installed or watch the video after this, um, you can follow along. This is going to work exactly like a demo. So Kali Linux is a Linux distribution created by an outfit called um, Offensive Security. Um, started as something called Backtrack back in 2006. From 2013, it's Debian-based, which is quite nice. And um, it's got over 600 different tools that you can use for a whole multitude of security things that you might want to do. Um, but we're only going to worry about two of them in uh, today's presentation. Uh, the first one you can find is called Aircrack. And um, when you open that up, you'll find everything runs on the command line. And because we're going to be real hackers today, <laughs> everything is going to happen on the command line from here on out. Now, every command I'm going to put in, I'm just going to run, or just imagine that I run a clear command after that. And um, we're just going to zoom in a little bit so everyone can see what we're doing. So who's used Linux a lot over here already? All that fantastic, fantastic. So you guys know that if you type in ifconfig, you're going to get a list of all your um, network devices. But if you type in iwconfig, you can get a list of all your wireless devices. And um, I want you to notice that they're all running in something called managed mode. Now, in managed mode, your wireless device is only going to worry about the access point that it's associated with, that it's going to talk to. And we want to change that. So first tool I'm going to run is something called Airmon, and that's just going to show me my wireless adapters again. And for now, we're just going to worry about that WLAN 0 device that I'm going to use, the Intel one. And if I run Airmon ng start WLAN 0, excuse me, that's the one I'm going to use, um, you see, it's already giving me a problem, and this is because there are other processes on your computer that are busy using that wireless device, and we want to stop that. So to see what those are, we can use mongng again, do a mongng check, and you can see those are the processes and the PIDs that are busy using that thing. So to get rid of that, I can do a mongng check kill, and it's going to safely go and end those processes. And if you were connected to a wireless network, you'll find that that icon at the top is going to stop working, and that's. Fantastic. So to start things up now, I can try this again, and I can go M on NG start WLAN 0. And I want you to notice something. My wireless LAN 0 adapter is now changed to W um, LAN 0 mod, which means it can now operate in, um, well, in monitor mode. And if I do another IW config, um, notice that it's now in monitor mode. So now we can get started. But have we broken the law yet? Well, probably not. You might have broken your end user license agreement with the maker of your wireless adapter, but um, for the most part, I think you're okay for now, depending on the country you live in. I'm not a lawyer, so. <laughs> so when we want to start scanning for wireless networks, we're going to use a different part of Aerocrack, and that's going to be AeroDump. So you just put in AeroDump and then the new name of your wireless interface that you're going to use, that's WLAN0MON, and it's going to start scanning. 
And um, what you're going to see over here is at the top, you've got the wireless access points that it's picked up and any of the stations that are communicating to those APs. And starting on the, the left side over here, your BSSID, that's the MAC address of your wireless access point, channel 11. Um, so we're just going to paste that um, BSSID. And the ESSID, the name of that wireless network is DEF CON. It's not the same DEF CON um, network that's running here today. Sorry, this was something we prepared a little bit earlier. So don't get too excited. But if you've got time, you can, you can work on that one afterwards. <laughs> so how do we capture the handshake? Well, um, we need to start capturing the packets. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a directory where I can go and put all of my captured files in. I'm just going to call that DEF CON and CD into that directory. See, I'm typing quite slowly and telepathically today. <laughs> and um, now I can run something called error dump. And dash C is for that channel, which was 11. And the BSSID, I'm just going to paste in there, because that's too long. And you'll notice on the end of all of these commands, I'm going to put the name of the wireless adapter that I want to use for this operation. And it starts capturing packets. But now what? We need to wait for someone else to connect. So we can just wait. We or we can do something else. <laughs> um, there's another tool called AirPlay. And with AirPlay, I can send 10 deauthentication packets <laughs> to kick everyone off. Now, now this is part of those, uh, <laughs> this is when we start causing a little bit of trouble. Um, again, I've just put in that, that access point, and uh, I could even have targeted a specific computer if I'd seen its, um, its um, and address. And this is quite, quite sure to, to cause some trouble. So meanwhile, on another computer, uh, you can expect their Wi-Fi to maybe start <laughs> doing that, and, and hopefully they, they don't notice. Um, and they're going to reconnect. Now, while we had that running in another tab, we can pop back to where we were doing our uh, capturing. And you can see there's our BSSD. We're capturing some more packets. Here's some interaction already happening with our access, well, between that, that station that was disconnected. And bang, we've captured that, um, that, uh, that handshake. So cool, where is that? Well, um, we go back to our DevCon folder, and you can see the whole bunch of files. And we're going to be interested in that top one, that cap01. Dot cat file. And this is the same sort of thing you could open up with something like Wireshark, go analyze and, and see what those management frames look like inside. Have we broken the law now? Well, um, there is this thing called the RICA Act, which talks it's not just about cell phones, it's uh, about regulation of interception of communications and stuff like that. Um, and arguably, you could, might also be in trouble for a little bit of harassment, but it's going to be quite difficult to prove where these packets came from. So not everyone's going to to, to have the equipment to know where you were sending all these deauth packets from. But, uh, but, but good luck to you when you do this. Um, how do we get the passphrase out of this? Because we've just got this, this hash that we've captured now. So back in Kali Linux, I'm going to use a different tool. And this is Aircrack, the namesake of the tool we're actually using. And the first thing I want to do is actually put in that capture file. And if I just press enter, you see it already begins to complain. It's, it's got the handshake. You can see it in there, but we need a, a, a dictionary. Um, to, to get this in. So now's a good time to talk about word lists, which are just big files full of passwords that it can try to see how we get this. And keep in mind, while we're doing this, we're doing this on our local machine. We're not interacting with the network anymore. No one can see that we're doing this. And if we'd waited passively to pick any of these things up, no one would know that we're doing this so far. Anyway, now, um, the nice thing about Kali Linux is it comes with a word list pre-installed. So if you go to user slash wordless and you check that out, you'll see there's a rockyou.txt wordless. It's quite a good one. It's got 7 million passwords in there that we can use. But uh, you would have seen it was compressed, so I'm just going to do a g-unzip and quickly uncompress that one. Sorry, my telepathic typing is a little bit slow here. Boom. And if I ls that same directory out, user share wordlists. Ha, it's now uncompressed and I can use it. So if I run aircrack ng again, and I put in that cat file, and I'll do dash w to reference that word list. And this is all in real time, so you would expect this to happen on. Boom, we found that. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? And notice it was only the 12th one that I had to, to, to test. Um, please hold your applause. <laughs> no, seriously, who's thinking, um, but you cheated? And, and you're right, because out of all the characters I could have used to compose this password, I only used the numeric ones. 
Um, and, and that's true. This is a lightning talk. We, we could have been here all day if we had to wait for that to, to, to crank. So to give you a sense of, of how long these things take to run, let's chat about key spaces and um, how long it would take. So if I had to go and use something like a GTX 980 that can do around 200,000 um, WPA hashes per second, if I wanted to try every password that I could make in eight characters between zero and nine, or that used the characters zero to nine, that would only take me 8.3 minutes to test. Not too bad. If I had to use all the letters, um, well, just A to Z, and just use lowercase letters, that would take me 12.1 days to try absolutely every single one of them. Same for the uppercase letters. And if I tried these 32 printable characters that you could also use to make up a Wi-Fi password, that would take 63.6 days. You can see how the feasibility is getting a bit bad. However, if I had to create a password using all of them, it'll take me almost 1,000 years to get through that. Um, but keep in mind, these were only eight character passwords. If I had to go for a 12 character password, and mind you, for the WPA spec, you can get up to 63 character passwords, it's going to take that amount of time. So yeah, some passwords are <laughs> not possible to crack. But there are some tools that we can use uh, to help us with the more difficult passwords to accelerate things. And this is where Hashcat is the second tool that we can bring in that comes shipped with Kali Linux. Um, what makes Hashcat different is, unlike Aircrack, it uses not your CPU, but your GPU. And you can use, for example, on an NVIDIA um, graphics card, you can use all those CUDA cores in parallel to go and check all these different hashes. And I mean, uh, like a 980 will have, a, have, have over 2,000 cores. So that's a significant um, um, improvement in the amount of time that you can do things. Uh, so just to give you a demo of how we would use this, and, and for me to use Hashcat, I first need to use a tool to convert that dot cap file into a dot hc cap file. Now I've just pulled uh, this thing called hashcat utils from GitHub, but I want to use that cap to hc capex dot bin, uh, just to convert my, my cap file. So I've had us run that, and I reference back to that cap file that was sitting in my devcon folder, and I let that run. And I just go back to my devcon folder to see that we've created that file. Boom, you'll see I've got a new capex file that I can now use with Hashcat. And if I want to use Hashcat, uh, part of me, I used to use, I need to use dash force on this because I don't have a, a nice GPU to run on this. Uh, we put in m.2500 because that's the name of the hash we want to use and our new capex file. And now I'm just going to reference that same um, word list that we were using, that Rocky word list. And this thing starts up. And um, if you had a very, you know, a very good graphics card, this is when it would start heating up and the fans would start running. Uh, but this one's quite easy and it's already pulled that password out for the Dev, Dev Conch Network. Um, let's chat about Bruce Force attacks as well, and why. Now, if you look at the bottom of the labels of many different Wi-Fi routers, who can see something common about all of these default passwords? They're all numbers, or they're all hexadecimal numbers, and, and that's all quite a common thing that you find. Um, so if I wanted to use Hashcat to do the same thing, um, with a password that I suspected to be numeric, I'd go Hashcat Force, and I'd go M2500 for the WPA hash again, and put in my CapEx file. Okay, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to put it in something called Attack Mode 3, and just going to go question mark D, question mark D, and that's only for decimal numbers, all right? Eight times, because I'm expecting a character, or eight character passwords to come through over here. And boom, I found that one again. So that's how you can do brute force things. And there are different commands that you can use to give you different um, alternatives. Example, if I wanted to do everything from 0 to 9, including A to F, um, that would take only six hours. So really, really not too bad. And how do I know about the default root key space as well? It's quite well publicized on, on many forums. Most people who have not bothered to change the name of their Wi-Fi network, <laughs> which identifies the type of router that they've bought, are unlikely to change the password, which of course here I've got a list of which characters they're using and what the length of those default passwords are. Um, if I'm dealing with more complicated passwords, I could build a very expensive rig like this. Each of these cards of 2,000 CUDA cores, or more than that, so that's over 16,000 um, CUDA cores, all working very hard to, to crack one of these things. Uh, and Hashcat works very, very well on these. And if that's not good enough for you, the cloud offers great potential uh, for a lot of these neural network things. I know NVIDIA is working with AWS services right now to build these, um, these great like, um, you know, massive GPU rigs that you can use. Um, I imagine if you're running it, it'll probably look like you're just training a very big neural network. 
Um, so, have you broken the law now? Well, now that you've got that passphrase, I suppose that is up to you. Um, but, <laughs> uh, at least in terms of South African legislation, um, it's not too bad. You know, we do have the RICA Act, the ECT Act, and there's a new uh, Cyber Crimes and Cyber Security Bill coming out as well. So, do watch out for that. So, lastly, who's thinking, I'm going to change my Wi-Fi password when I get home? That's all. Thank you very much. <laughs> We got time for questions. Yes, go for it. All right, so um, Hashcat is not just about breaking Wi Fi passwords. Hashcat you can use to break any sort of hash. So, um, who here builds web applications? Almost all of you, fantastic. And who here properly salts and hashes their passwords in their databases? Fantastic, that's, that's, that's better than I expected. Um, so, if you've heard of a SHA-1, SHA-512, SHA-3, any of those things, um, you, you could use Hashcat to break those things as well. So what you normally do with, uh, and there are different commands you use for this, but if you have a text file, so let's say, um, I don't know, somehow, I don't know how, you got a database that's got all these hashed passwords, usernames and hashed passwords, and they're just these massive 64 character hashes, an example. They're SHA-512 hashes. You could put them in a text file, all right, and point Hashcat to that text file, and it will run through all of those, either against a word list or against, um, you can do a brute force attack. Um, Hashcat's also extremely useful because you can create these awesome rules-based interactions. So for example, if there's a password like, I don't know, Apple, um, it could try Apple with an uppercase, Apple case all uppercase, Apple with two numeric digits, four numeric digits on the end, uh, the first, there's even cool, um, like, uh, some scripts on GitHub, so that if you're targeting a specific individual, you can enter in um, as much information as you know about them. So anything you could scrape off Facebook, first name, last name, date of birth, to get, you know, what star sign they think they are. Any of that kind of information, where they live, where they worked, all those kinds of things it picks up. And it creates a custom dictionary just for that individual. That will go and create all the different combinations with, you know, their dates of birth, numbers in front, numbers in the back. And um, it's, it's used for all kinds of things, but generally I see it used to break, um, to find passwords. Do you know if it's compatible with rainbow tables? Um, you, you could actually use it to generate rainbow tables. Um, so Hashcat will create a rainbow table as it does that. Um, a rainbow table will just be a list of pre-computed um, hashes, and that's one of the reasons why we salt passwords when we save them. So we, we take some random data and we add that in. Um, so that, you know, like a common password that everyone uses, like uppercase password one, you know, who hasn't had that password issued to them? <laughs> Not one of you, okay. <laughs> Security's getting better. But, um, you yeah, know, uh, so, so that that known thing that you commonly find in a rain rainbow table isn't, um, isn't a worry. So multiple people can have the same password on your system, but the hashes look completely different because they all have different songs. Anything else? Yes? Um, well, I speak under correction, but every time a new version of Kali Linux comes out, if there are improvements to that word list, I'm sure you can. Um, but there are many, many other different word lists you can find. So you can download or even purchase um, better word lists. You know, um, I was quite surprised. I found an Afrikaans word list. You know, so, and, and there's a whole bunch of them you know, for different countries, different languages, everything else. Um, yeah, I think the Kali one's just an, an English one. Um, and I think that one's probably just maintained as the most common passwords. But it's a nice one that just came pre-installed. The idea of this demo really was that if you watch the video later on and you've got a copy of Kali right in front of you, if you cop if type in all the commands I've just done over there, you'll be able to do exactly the same. Out of interest, what was the software that you used to create those um, command line? Oh, the, the videos that I did over here? Yeah. Goodness, that was a bit of a process because normally I work on Keynote but then I understood I needed to create a PowerPoint presentation. I thought, okay, so now to try and keep this thing um, like easy and maybe web friendly, I actually found something called Peek, and Peek um, allows you to create GIF files, actually, or GIF files, don't throw anything at me, um, <laughs> that, uh, that you can use. So that's nice to maybe plug into a website, and then I used those, and of course that worked beautifully in Keynote, and then the moment I saved it as a PowerPoint file, they carried on repeating, uh, so that was a little bit annoying. Um, you, oof, 
Actually, Kali Linux comes with its own screen recorder built in as well. So that's a very nice thing uh, that you can use. It's built in. So when you start it up, it's right there. Anything else? Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day.